You guys know I love Emacs. I switched over from Vim to Emacs about two years ago, and I use a distribution of Emacs called Doom Emacs, which is just truly fantastic. It uses evil mode by default. Evil mode is a, basically a Vim emulation. Uh, so when you're editing documents, you basically have Vim inside Emacs. All your Vim commands, they just work. You'd never even know you weren't in Vim. It's again, truly fantastic. But a lot of you guys have watched some of my videos, especially on Doom Emacs, and you're giving it a try because I hear from you guys and you're not having a good time or you're, you're unsure how this thing even works. Some of you are unsure why anybody would even use Emacs. So like you're just completely confused by the whole thing. And I see video content creators out there trying Emacs for the first time. It's like every week I see another video pop up in my feed. Hey, this guy's trying out Emacs for the first time. And I, I've never watched one of those videos where that content creator had a good time trying out Emacs because I don't think, you know, I'm not one of these people that try to tell people how to use a piece of software. I've never been one of those people. I've never told anybody they're using their desktop environment wrong or window manager wrong or terminal emulator or text editor or whatever it happens to be. I'm not one of those kinds of people. Whatever, however you config your software, however your workflow is, you know, it's different than mine. That's okay. You know, I don't care and you shouldn't care about what other people are doing with their software either but Emacs is a special case because it's so different if you come at this thing the wrong way you're in for a bad time and I see a lot of people making what I call rookie mistakes where they're just using Emacs quite frankly the wrong way so today I wanted to show you guys some of those rookie mistakes so you don't make them so let me switch over to my desktop here and probably the number one rookie mistake people make is they don't launch Emacs with the Emacs server, the Emacs daemon. I see way too many new to Emacs users when they first launch Emacs complain that it's slow and it takes a long time to load and I'm just going to go back to using Vim or whatever they were using before because Emacs is just slow. And it's because they run Emacs this way. Let me launch dmenu and type the word Emacs. And I'm just going to launch Emacs just the standard way by running the Emacs command. And that took 1.72 seconds to load. Now, Doom Emacs is optimized for speed. The people that work on Doom Emacs, they actually put a ton of work into making Doom Emacs fast. It's actually faster than most of the other distributions of Emacs out there. So Doom Emacs actually is pretty pippy. And that still took almost two seconds to launch. Again, it's because we didn't launch Emacs the proper way. So what is the proper way to launch Emacs? Well, let me launch a terminal here and clear the screen. I'll zoom way in here. And this is the way Emacs users typically will launch Emacs. First, they're going to want to have a daemon running in the background. So Emacs has a server client kind of relationship going on. So Emacs has a server, it has a daemon, a process that's going to run in the background. It's always running in the background on your computer listening for any time you open a client window. A client window will be like your text editor, right? And so that is what we need to make sure is running. We need to make sure that the Emacs daemon is running. You launch that with the command Emacs space dash dash daemon space ampersign. If I run that, it should launch the server. Yeah, and now the server is running. Now I did the full path to Emacs, user bin Emacs space dash dash daemon. It's because I have Emacs actually aliased to something else. So just to make sure there's no conflict with my alias, you know, I type the full path. But if you don't have Emacs alias to anything else, you could just do Emacs space dash dash daemon. So now that the server is running in the background, how do you launch Emacs? Well, you launch Emacs instead of just typing the word Emacs, it's Emacs client all one word and I typically give it the following flags dash C for create a new frame meaning if I already have a Emacs window open I would rather this window be in its own separate window I just like having a lot of different Emacs windows open instead of everything being all in the same one frame it's because I use a tiling window manager it's just easier for me to rearrange all those windows and then give it this flag here dash A for alternate meaning hey if for some reason the Emacs server is not running and it can't launch the Emacs client what would you rather us run just run the standard Emacs command so that just the uh, non server version of Emacs if I run that look how long that took to launch now you probably thought that took longer to launch because you were probably waiting for something to appear in this window that's just an empty frame it's a scratch buffer basically but that actually launched rather fast I have a key binding to launch doom Emacs at my dashboard so let me launch that and you guys can see that actually launches very fast now it says emacs started in 1.59 seconds that's not how long that window took that window opened almost instantly 
let me launch it again. Yeah, it still says started in 1.59 seconds. That's how long the Emacs daemon took because the server, that was the startup process. So it's telling us how long that took. These windows are loading much, much faster than that, though. So that's the number one rookie mistake people do is they don't use the Emacs server and the Emacs client. All of your Emacs windows should be Emacs clients. Now, the number two rookie mistake I see way too many people is you know, opening Emacs in a terminal, basically, or, or, or from a file manager. You go and navigate a file manager to find a file, and then you open it in Emacs from the file manager. You don't need to do any of that stuff with terminals and file managers because Emacs has terminals and file managers built into it. For example, let me close that window. If I wanted to, I don't know, uh, launch my bash RC in Emacs from the terminal. Well, great. I have my bash RC now opened inside Emacs. I have this unnecessary terminal window just sitting here. I can't do anything with it because it's running Emacs, right? It's, it's taken, it's got that process running in it. It's just a, a worthless terminal window. Same thing with your file manager. If you did something from it, you got a file manager open that you don't really need anymore and you didn't need in the first place because all you need to do, if you want to navigate your file manager, for example, to open a file, just launch Emacs. And then in Doom Emacs, space period launches Deer Ed, which is the built-in file manager. From there, I could navigate to wherever. I'm going to navigate into my .xmonad folder. Uh, I could find my readme. Tab complete works too, so you can tab complete all the paths and just find the file you want to open. And there. Uh, and then I didn't need that unnecessary file manager that's just wasting space on my screen when Emacs already has everything kind of built into it. The same thing with a terminal. If I needed to run some commands in a terminal, I mean, I could open a second terminal, you know, alacrity in this case. But really, if it's, I'm, I'm only doing one or two things in a terminal just quickly, you know, uh, I could actually just do meta x. Alt X on the keyboard and Vterm. Vterm is one of the several terminal emulators that's built into Emacs. And I get this new split here. Let me adjust the size here. And this is Vterm here. If I did a PWD, print working directory, or I could cat, I don't know, the bash RC. Of course, catting the bash RC won't work because I'm in .xmonad because that was the directory of the file that we were in. So that's very smart of Vterm actually to know exactly where we were when we opened it. And I know some of you guys are going to be like, hey, I don't want my terminal in a horizontal split in the, you know, I want a terminal window being its own separate window. Well, I can do that. I have it keybind uh, in my Xmonad key bindings. I have control E followed by V opens a window, its own window. This is an Emacs window running V term. Now, what's cool about this is, let me hit escape to get into normal mode and close that. Uh, and that window, that terminal window, that V term went away. But again, we have the Emacs server running in the background. And because everything you do in Emacs, it's its own separate buffer. I do space B I to get into I buffer. I still have V term as a buffer here and I can switch back to it if I wanted to space B I to get back into I term. And if I want to go back to where I had the uh, readme.org for Xmonad open, I could do that too. Of course, I could do space B P for pre previous buffer. I could do space B in for next buffer. So that was the second of the big rookie mistakes is too many people are, are trying to work Emacs like it's Vim. Like, you know, Vim, of course, is a terminal program. So it makes sense to have a terminal open, do everything in a terminal. When you need Vim, of course, you're, you have to launch Vim inside a terminal. Emacs is not a terminal program. Emacs is actually a GUI program, which brings us to the third mistake that people make is a lot of people mistakenly think Emacs is a terminal program. If I click this link, which is an image file, watch what happens. Oh, I get an image here in the split, an image preview. And the reason I get that image preview is because this is a graphical program. Let me zoom back in. If you guys notice the fonts here inside the table of contents, you see the top level header table of contents. That is a different font size. That's a bigger font size than the rest of the, the fonts here. You cannot do that in a terminal emulator. You can have varying font sizes in a graphical program and a GUI program, which is what Emacs is. You cannot do this in a terminal program. Vim will never be able to have varying font sizes inside it because that's impossible to do inside a terminal. Of course, Vim is not going to give you image previews and things like that. If I opened the uh, EWW browser, EWW, and then give it a web address. I'll go to distro.tube, which is, of course, my website. Uh, once again, just to verify that we actually get images, you know, I can actually browse the web inside Emacs. Why? It's because Emacs is able to display all that graphical goodness that you expect a web browser to be able to display. 
So number three of the big rookie mistakes is launching a terminal and then launching the terminal version of Emacs, which I have alias to EM in my config, but it's actually uh, the full path to it would be Emacs space dash NW for non-windowing. I mean, you can run this in a terminal or a TTY, but I have that alias to just EM. And let's open my bash RC and the terminal version of Emacs. Of course, I guess the uh, Emacs daemon doesn't affect that because that did take a couple of seconds to load. But, you know, it loads fine. And this is usable. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It looks OK, right? It's just basically like Vim inside the terminal, Emacs inside the terminal. But again, you're kind of you're not doing yourself any justice here you're not doing yourself any favors because again you're not gaining anything from running emacs inside the terminal it's slower running it in the terminal than it was just running the graphical emacs client the other thing is you don't get the advantages you don't get all of the cool stuff you can do with varying font sizes and some font faces and stuff like that you don't get uh, images you don't get you know the really cool bullets and things and org mode and things like that all the graphical stuff that is really tough or impossible to do in a terminal, you get all of that in GUI version of Emacs. So just, just don't even bother with the terminal version of Emacs because Emacs is meant to be that GUI version, right? The terminal version of Emacs is there if you don't have a graphical server. If you don't have XORG on a system or Wayland, you know, all you have is a TTY and you want to use Emacs, then you use the terminal version of Emacs. That's why it's there. If you have a graphical display server installed like XORG or Wayland, it's just kind of expected that you're going to use the graphical version of Emacs. So that was just a, a very quick video today. I just wanted to share those three rookie mistakes that I see way too many new to Emacs users making this. You guys that are trying out Emacs, especially Doom Emacs, let's cover this one more time. Always start Emacs using the Emacs client. Make sure the Emacs daemon auto starts with your window manager or desktop and always use Emacs client to launch Emacs and set that to an alias. Put it in your bash RC, your fish RC, whatever it is you're doing. Make sure that when you type Emacs, it actually launches the Emacs client. Number two, stop navigating around in a terminal or a file manager when you know you're going to end up in Emacs, right? Just launch Emacs. Emacs already has a terminal and a file manager built into it. You're not going to have these extra unnecessary windows on the screen that you didn't need in the first place. And number three, don't use the terminal version of Emacs if you're in a Xorg or Wayland environment. Use the graphical GUI version of Emacs. It's just plain better. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show, Devin, Gabe, James, Matt, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Akami, Alan, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Kurt, Dayoka, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Lee, Maxim, Michael, Mike, Nitrix, Erjan, Alexander, Peace, Arjun, Fedor, Polytech, Raver, Rip Prophet, Steven, and Willie. These guys are my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched would not have been possible. The show is brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. It's just me and you guys, the community. If you like the work I do and want to support me, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. All the built-in Emacs games run better in the GUI version, too.